Hello everyone and welcome to the channel, it's Paul Yester here, and I know there was a lot of excitement yesterday with the Cursed Legacy chapter dropping, there was a lot of information that was dropped in the release notes and the patch notes, and I myself, even as a fog whisperer, was, was so excited to get into the new content that I didn't thoroughly read through all of the information that they provided to us, and I honestly felt rather silly that as a fog whisperer I was going to the community managers like Peanuts and Pat and asking questions that they had provided answers for which must have been frustrating for them and uh, I apologize but I do want to cover a couple of the things that uh, were in the patch notes here so that uh, I can inform all of you about it first thing I want to talk about is the implementation of the disconnect penalties so if we go on the forums here they have this post with this new feature it says the disconnect penalty feature in testing as of Thursday, December the 5th, which is tomorrow as of my recording of this video, we will be testing a new feature on our dedicated server-enabled platforms. Keep in mind that the only platforms that are on dedicated server are the Steam players, the Windows Store players, and the Nintendo Switch players. Not PS4, not Xbox One. This feature is designed to penalize players that are disconnecting from matches. Users who disconnect from matches will be prevented from joining a new match for a predetermined length of time, which increases after each instance of disconnection. Our objective with this feature is to discourage players from quitting games and will serve a double purpose of excluding users who are already in a negative mental state from re-entering matchmaking until they've had a chance to cool down. The system will also apply if one or more players in a group has an active disconnect penalty preventing the entire group from joining the matchmaking queue until the penalized members have either cleared their penalty or leave the group. The incremental penalties will decay naturally over time, starting and after the most recent matchmaking ban has been completed. No idea how long the penalties are going to be. I, for one, am very happy to see this being implemented. As many of you know, I have long been an opponent against a disconnection unless it's under the direst of circumstances. And now I've had people say to me, well, people are just going to kill themselves on hook, which is fine because sometimes that's all I need is those extra few seconds of that survivor getting carried to the hook to allow me to complete my generator or whatever, figure out what I'm going to do by the time that person gets hooked rather than them just quit and then the killer can come right after me. Sometimes those few seconds is all that I need. And hey, <laughs> you can't suicide on hook when it's last hook, can you? Is there the potential here for killers to abuse survivors knowing that if they make them DC that they'll have to take a time penalty? Sure, but there's also a report system, so if they're doing something in a way to host make take the game hostage, then you can report them for that, and then they risk a ban themselves if they want to try and mess with you and force you to DC. Now, we have no word of what these time penalties are going to be. I'm not going to be the guinea pig for it. I won't be DCing to find out how much time I'm getting timed out for because I'm not going to DC. So you guys are going to have to let me know what the uh, timing is on these if you decide to DC or you don't realize the penalties are coming and then you DC and then receive the penalties. Let me know what they are. And truth be told, I'm not 100% confident that this disconnection penalty will be implemented tomorrow because I don't know if you noticed this, but there is a pretty severe bug in this chapter right now where people who get hooked in the basement uh, fall through the floor and just see a view of the sky and they're trapped in the basement. Um, I've had two dozen people send this to me, but it is on the known bugs list here, so... Uh, if we read through the patch notes like we should have, we would have known that this was a thing that was happening. So if we go in the known issues of the patch notes here, uh, let's see, flickering wiggle buttons when getting interrupted. Yeah, I've seen that one. It's possible for a survivor not to have the wiggle option when being picked up by the killer if another survivor comes in range. Yeah, I've seen that one a couple of times. But the one we're talking about right now is the it's possible for the survivor to fall out of the world from their perspective and be unable to attempt escape when hooked. Typically this seems to be happening in the basement. The basement seems the most buggy, but I've had people tell me that it's happened to them and other hooks as well. So when they get hooked, it just looks like they're infinitely falling through the sky and they can't do anything. And when another survivor unhooks them, they're still infinitely falling in the sky and they can't walk out of the basement. And the person looks normal for everyone else. This bug is only from their perspective. 
a workaround that I have been told about this, and I haven't tested it myself, but hey, it's worth a shot, is when you're a survivor, you want to pump fake unhooking somebody in the basement. So you're gonna like partially unhook them and let go, and then fully unhook them. And apparently this resets their camera. So I don't know when they're gonna have a hot fix for this, but in the meantime, I would suggest this as a remedy. And unless you're on comms, you don't know that it's happening to this other survivor. So I would just always like tap unhook every survivor in the basement in case they do have that bug. And you can try and correct their point of view by like almost double unhooking them. This partially unhook them and then fully unhook them after that to reset their camera. It's worth a shot. Let me know if that works for all of you. And I heard people say, well, they should just ban these killers who are hooking people in the basement right now. Well, number one, you can't prove that the killers know that they're bugging the survivor since they look normal from the killer's point of view and it's only the survivor's point of view is skewed. And number two, in the archives, we have a ton of challenges right now where people are required to hook people in the basement to complete these challenges. So I know some people think it looks fishy when killers are running iron grasp and agitation and they think they're trying to purposefully bug survivors, but it could just be that they're going for those challenges. So you can't at the same time have challenges requiring killers to hook people in the basement and then turn around and punish those killers for hooking people in the basement. So the reason why I say we may not see this um, disconnect penalty implemented tomorrow is if this bug exists and people are getting trapped in the basement and they're just infinitely falling, they don't understand what's happening to them, they just know that their game's bugged, the first inclination is going to be to disconnect from the match. So uh, I don't think it's really fair to initiate this penalty when this bug exists and people would want to DC from this bug because they don't really understand what's going on. All they know is that they're infinitely falling and their game isn't working right. So you may see the uh, implementation of this disconnect penalty system that they're testing pushed back or maybe they'll fix that bug of the infinite falling and the DC penalties will come tomorrow. Anyway, the DC penalties are going to be tested soon so you should get prepared to uh, not DC. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a great day. Bye-bye.